This was the week where the temperature of Earth matched the state of our democratic institutions. Melting. <laughs> <laughs> Europe's heat wave has already killed a thousand people. Uh, remember, a lot of people in over there do not have AC. They don't have their AC units blasting. Um, I am like, I love my AC unit more than I love anyone, more than my husband, more than the unborn child I'm carrying. It's the AC <laughs> unit. Let's be real. Um, there are wildfires raging from Greece to Spain. Tuesday, the UK broke its heat record of 40 degrees Celsius, which is 104 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the record, and they broke it. You know, there's a reason that they, that the British are always like, later. we go to Spain. You know, yeah, yeah. There, there's a reason they, like, go summer somewhere else, because it's never actually, like, horribly hot. Mm -hmm. um, and it was. Uh, Greenland lost enough ice in a three-day stretch in July to fill 7.2 million Olympic-sized swimming pools. And I want one. Um, and yeah. this is all sad. This is all awful. Um, let me ex break it down even more. This was earlier in June, but the World Meteorological Organization says there's a growing chance that global temperatures will break the 1.5 Celsius threshold over the next five years compared to pre-industrial levels. There's actually a 20% possibility that that mark will be broken in any one year before 2024. So that's two years away. Um, the reason 1.5 is really important is we need to keep the climate, the temperature below 1.5 degrees Celsius to avoid the worst climate impacts. Um, the target, sorry, that 1.5 is the amount that the globe's warmed, not like total. This is the amount that mm -hmm. it's warmed since the industrial age. The target was agreed to by world leaders in 2015, the Paris Climate Accords. And uh, previous studies had put the short term in chances of going above 1.5 at 10 percent now it's doubled and said uh say the climate modelers and it's increasing with time so essentially 20 percent chance we're going to break it in in two years and then most certainly we will break it by uh 1.5 over the next five years so shit is bad um however we do have some heroes and i have to say this man is has won the internet for, for the foreseeable future uh this is maybe it's a fake i don't care but the uk temperatures led to the best video uh, a man sitting in his own trash can and yelling at a man filming him sitting in his trash can <laughs> listen there's no problem i'm just saying you're in the bin yeah i'm swimming but yeah, yeah but why because it's a hot day yeah, yeah, but you're in the bin. Yeah, well, I'm trying to enjoy the hottest day in England. It's forty degrees. Well, what? Well, well, it's not. It's not. It's not a it celebration. Is. It's not. It's yeah, not like it's a, a bit. Celebration. How is it? Well, it's a celebration for normal English people like me. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I but no buts. No, no, but you're having a cocktail in the bin. Yeah, I'm having a cocktail in the bin. But why? Right. If you want to fight about it, come here and fight. You're trying to bring me down. No, no, I'm, I'm not trying to bring you down. Yes, you are. I'm not. Of course you are. I'm not trying to bring you down. you come here, first of all, say, oi, oi, what are you doing? Like, in my own bin, in my own house. Yeah? Uh, you've got nothing to say now, have you? Yeah, you just want to sit there giving it waffle, waffle, waffle. You don't want to come and fight like a man. No. You just want to say, eh, you can't do this, you can't do that. When I, all I want to do is enjoy the sunshine. No, 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 no. I'll come out, but like, I don't oh, want to yeah, fight. Well, come out then. Don't just say, oh, I will come all out. Right, all, right, come all right, out. all right, all right, all right, I'm coming out. All right, you're coming out. I'll knock your bloody nose down your throat. All right, then go on then. You see, ah! <laughs> Why would he fight him? That man was just living his life. <laughs> In my own bin, you try to bring me down. You try to bring but, me down. This is this is the, the most. <laughs> I, Matt and I, uh, my husband have realized that our relationship is this relationship that he is man in bin, and I am, <laughs> <laughs> I am dude filming him. Accurate. Not <laughs> trying to bring him down, but just like, why? You know what I mean? Why do you have to chew ice like that? You know, like, why <laughs> do you do things the way you do? And he's like, what? you're trying to bring me down. I'm like, no, I'm not. Like, I'm living out. <laughs> but it's true. I fucking love this guy. He's in his trash can. It's hot trash summer, guys. Everything is hot trash. trash <laughs> and... And it's it just I we need that because everything is awful and scary 
but a man in bin wins for me. Um, man in bin. <laughs> but you're in a the lot bin. <laughs> but you're in the bin. He just kept saying that but was what bin. was provoking him. You're in the bin. <laughs> and it's like, I will fight you. <laughs> He's like, I don't want to fight. And then he falls. And, and you know, look, maybe it was all staged. Maybe they were friends. I don't know. Maybe. He was like in a car. It feels, if you're not, if you're listening as a podcast, dude who was filming was in a car, gets out. And then the guy, mm -hmm. if, as you heard from the splash, fell out of his bin. And it was glorious. And he spilled his drink, which was the saddest part of that whole thing. Um, yeah. 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 That was, cool. that was very sad. Who among us hasn't bought a three foot inflatable pool for children in Los Angeles and then just sat in it? <laughs> I I bought have. a I bought a like like comically large inflatable pool so it could be big enough for Matt and then we needed like chlorine for it. It was very funny. It was so <laughs> stupid. That's how big it was. <laughs> it needed for Matt's size. Matt got Matt's body is the inflatable man in front of a furniture store. <laughs> that's so much cool. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. And I imagine that's he's like, yeah, the chlorine's making my skin itch. Like I'm just imagining him. You being know him about the way, whole thing. <laughs> you know him where very well. <laughs> Anna put Matt Lee on blast. Um, <laughs> so funny. I'm the chlorine. So, okay, back in the U.S., we've got a horrible, obviously, daily da temperatures are bro being broken in Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas. There's a fire raging out of control in Yosemite. Um, we just, you know, we want to know what's going on. What is President Joe Biden going to do? So he, before he got COVID, unveiled a series of executive actions, did not call for a national emergency that a, a lot of climate justice activists and climate activists were asking him to, but what does this do? A series of executive actions, $2.3 billion to FEMA's Building Resilient Infrastructure and Communities Program, um, directing HHS to expand their air conditioning and cooling centers using money from the infrastructure bill, expanding offshore wind power. Um, but it doesn't do a lot of things. So for example, if he were to declare a national emergency, he could free up a bunch of money um, he could use emergency powers, which you can't do otherwise, to do things like um, basically circumventing Congress, since we know nothing's going to get past Senator Joe Manchin, yeah. reinstating a uh, crude oil export ban, stopping offshore drilling. This was Grist, which is obviously a great um, uh, climate uh, magazine y'all should check out. Um, the The money is... Oh, oh excuse me. Um, this is... Do, 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 do. Oh, this is not. Never mind. Um, but Senator Whitehouse, who I really love, he's like my little like like what is it? My silver fox in in the Senate. Um, mm -hmm. He's saying we should we need a robust social cost of carbon rule, require carbon capture from all major emitters, stricter limits on co-pollutant co-pollutants, stronger emissions controls on cars and light trucks, um, hunt methane leaks, um, create some sort of DOJ to a uh, tell DOJ to evaluate tobacco style climate litigation. Um, so similar in the ways that they went after big tobacco companies go after um, actual like climate polluters. Um, mm -hmm. Dozens of smaller regulation regulations across departments, call out corporations who block climate action, um, ex use existing the existing executive branch and tariff authority to establish a carbon border tariff for imports from countries with worse relative carbon emissions based on industry carbon density. That's very interesting. So essentially like you can't mm -hmm. cross state lines without paying a certain carbon tax. Mm -hmm. um, all of these things that he could do and he's doing a fraction of them. It's similar, I think, to his approach to reproductive rights, which is like, oh, here's all the things I could do. I'm going to do this much. And immigration yeah. rights and dealing with the detention centers at the border, the whole thing. His whole, I think his whole thing is just like, you know, when you've got to clean up before your family comes, so you just shove it all in a closet and then you close it up and then you like put some Windex <laughs> on it and you're done. That's the Biden administration in a nutshell. Just like, it's fine. We did it. Yes. Yeah. That is, that is so true. Exactly. Like, is everything normal now? Mm -hmm. Um. No, and and it's not, and it and it. What's scary? It's sad to me that like this is a literal. Everything's on fire. 
Like, this is not, I mean, you could ignore people dying from not being able to access abortion rights, maybe, if you really tried. You can't really ignore this. And it yeah. is at our doorstep. It is happening now. We are living it. And we are such a rotting example for the world. I'm sorry. Here we are. We're begging, not only begging Saudi Arabia to, like, dig more oil, you know, begging war criminals, but we're, like, we're not even willing to, we're begging oil companies in this country. We're begging them, drill more, please drill more because gas prices are so expensive. If he really cared, he'd stop the fucking subsidies to the fossil fuel industry. He would get tough on these oil executives and say, I don't give a shit if you're like, I, you're going to raise prices anyway, no matter what I do. What, what else can they do to hurt you, Biden? Chevron mm -hmm. can't hurt you. You're not even doing enough. Even with high oil prices, your approval ratings would still be low. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what are you doing, man? You can't. So anyway, it's just, it's, uh, it's upsetting that the, I mean, yay, small baby steps, but we need major yeah. action right now. He loves um, a baby step. We don't need major change. We need incremental change that will last. That's, isn't right. that sort of paraphrasing his approach to everything we're just gonna inch our way it's like oh you got four years you are too old to run again do big <laughs> things now <laughs> oh you got four years i know that's a drop <laughs> in the bucket to your political career that's been way too long what's going on frantifa if you haven't already subscribe to this channel right now hit that button and also you can become a patron and support the show every single week get access to bonus episodes and exclusive merchandise patreon.com slash bituation room do it